So I came across a comment on social media the other day. Uh, it said, biological age versus real age is a total scam. If you want to see your real age, look at a master's category of athletic feats, such as a one mile run time, not some scammy algorithms. If the body can't physically express a performance, then you're the age on a birth certificate. I posted that, I reposted that and said, yep, totally agree with this. And a lot of interesting comments and questions came in. But the one that I wanted to chat about was one that said, Peter, I mean, yeah, this kind of makes sense, but like, why would physical tests be a better measure of biological age um, than, you know, fancy biomarkers? And I reflected on it and I said, I mean, I don't even know if I responded on, on social, but anyway, I thought I would do this. What I, what I, what I want to say is the following. Ultimately, physical performance is indeed the best metric of the limits of capacity. So there are non-physical performance metrics that we can look at as well. I could look at your kidney function. Or I could look at your glomerular filtration rate. And that would certainly be a marker of age. But honestly, it's, you know, only in an extreme case would that give me an insight. In other words, only if somebody is 50 and they have a glomerular filtration rate of somebody who's 80 would I say the negative. But the positive isn't really there. If you look at my glomerular filtration rate, it's over 100. That doesn't really tell you much about me, even though I'm over 50 years old. It tells you that my kidneys are in great shape, but it doesn't tell you that I have the kidneys of a 20-year-old because, quite frankly, they haven't really deteriorated in any measurable way since I'm 20. The same would be true of my ejection fraction. It's really good today. Um, now, of course, there are certain other factors that invariably go down. Uh, resting heart rate goes down, heart rate variability, uh, pardon me, resting heart rate goes up, heart rate variability goes down. But ultimately, if you really want to understand biological age, I really like this idea of we should look at physical metrics, right? We should be looking at VO2 max. We should be looking at strength. We should be looking at hardcore performances, um, including other things, by the way, that are, that are a little more subtle than the aggregate pieces. But, you know, we would want to look at things like um, balance. So how well can you stand on one leg with your eyes closed? Uh, how long can you do that? And can you even do more challenging things like turn your head? push-ups, pull-ups, all of these things really matter. And there's here you start to see an enormous gradation between people, even at the same age, uh, be it 20, 30, 50, etc. So um, am I optimistic that we will have blood-based biomarkers that give us more insight about age as time goes on? Absolutely. Um, do I think they are all complete and utter garbage today? No, I don't. I think there are some out there that probably give us a little bit more of an indication of rate of change of age um, than actual age. But at the end of the day, I don't believe that there's a single blood-based biomarker that you can look at and it can predict future years of life very well. So in other words, if you get a biological test at the age of 50 that says you are 25, before you give yourself high fives, ask yourself the following question. Does that really mean that you're going to live another 55 years, which is what you would expect if you're 25 years old? And I think the answer is no. If your chronological age is 50 and you get this test, I don't think it means you're gonna to live to be 105. Um, so anyway, don't discount the basics. The basics are how well you physically perform.